Welcome to another edition of Gopher Basketball Weekly with Ben Johnson, Mike Grimm, and Justin Gard with you. And man, it seems like we just did this show uh, last week and there's not been a lot of new news, certainly no new games. We're going to talk with the head coach about that. Uh, first of all, JG, good to see you. I'm cold, man. I'm cold. I liked last week when we went outside right after the show. We looked at some mountains. We got ready yeah. for a football game and now we're just so have, you, have you been outside lately, though? I stayed in literally the entire weekend because it was so cold. If, if you go outside right now, it legit feels like a heat wave. I swear I to God. I know. You're right. No, today I, 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 I literally just didn't even have my jacket on. I know. I followed like, my kids up for school today. I'm like, oh, they're not outside. We're, we've gotten kind of soft. They could play outside. The, the real yeah. feel was like 10 degrees. I was surprised. But you're right. It does, which is sick and it's sad. But that's all right. That's how we roll here in Minnesota. So I'm good with it. Maybe yeah. uh, maybe you could do some, uh, you know, a shoot around on the blacktop today, coach. Maybe that's uh, that's what you could do since it's so warm here, huh? I think Illinois, I'll let Illinois do that. Yeah, they can they can do the they, outdoor yeah. uh, deal. Hey, um, so kind of a weird uh, week, obviously, last week. In fact, it was you and I, I was literally about, what, one sentence into our pregame interview uh, that we taped right, right after your shoot around. I'm like, welcome back to the Golden Gopher pregame show. And uh, your uh, your director of ops and, and associate AD, Ryan Livingston, comes over and gives us the cut it off sign. Like, what? What's going on? <laughs> and he said, we just got an email. And then there was some more stuff that happened after that to try to figure it all out. But at the end of the day, uh, man, that was a bummer. About three hours before tip off, you find out that uh, Alcorn State uh, had popped enough positives to have to force that game to not happen. Yeah, it was tough. I mean, I think the first thing, obviously, is you hope, um, you know, everybody involved is okay. And, uh, and once we got kind of word that that it was it was manageable and, and they were good, then you just kind of break the news to the guys. You know, they were obviously excited. It just got done with shoot around and guys were mentally getting ready to, to play in a couple hours. And so there's kind of the, the disappointment of it. But, you know, at the same time, um, it is what it is. And you got to be able to to adapt and um, and kind of change the course. And so, um, you know, guys were down. Obviously, you were ready to compete and, and were, were excited to, to go out and play that game. But, you know, and uh, it kind of, like I said, it is what it is. And you got to be able to, to move on and adjust. And so took a couple of days uh, off and, and was able to tweak our practice schedule. And now we're up and ready and running and ready to roll. So what yeah. does get tweaked? Go ahead, Groomer. But I, I just wanted to say, what does get tweaked then when you think you're going to have a game and then probably unpacking the game and then moving on towards Big Ten play, which, by the way, also got tweaked. I'm sure we'll talk about that. We talked about that last week. So how do you just kind of change things on the fly? Yeah, the biggest thing is with your off days. So then you look at your camera because you're assuming that, you know, guys are going to log, you know, significant minutes on a Sunday. And that impacts when your next off day would be. And then it impacts your the rest of your week leading up to, you know, your next game. So you're just trying to figure out, OK, um, so we kind of took that day semi off with just a light shoot around. Um, OK, then what days are we going to we going to go you know, tomorrow and get in some work tomorrow since we were kind of off today to keep the legs going? Then we'll take a different day off. And then your next thought is, OK, we kind of knew uh, that the team we're playing uh, on Tuesday had a little bit of an issue. So now you're trying to feel like, OK, is this going to be a back to back thing? And then you got to maneuver the schedule again. So, um, you know, it's just a lot of moving parts and pieces. And you just try to have a lot of communication and talk and just be flexible. Again, uh, I think that's the, the key word is you got to be able to adapt. You got to be flexible. Um, players are, are were really good and understanding about it. Um, and you just kind of kind of plan accordingly. Yeah. And I guess my follow up to it, too, is, you know, the you know, the, the technical guidelines, I think, that the Big Ten conference has put out, which may or may not apply to a non-conference game like the Alcorn State game. But certainly for the for the fighting Illini game um, is, you know, you need seven players and at least a coach, you know, whether it's the head coach or whether it's an assistant or what have you. But there's also right that fine line between. All right. They got seven guys and an assistant just to throw it out. I don't know what the numbers really are. Um, do we really want to play against those guys? Because we don't know one of those guys might be infected and all of a sudden we we get it. So is it better just not to play all corn state? Even I know there was a moment where like, hey, we got to push this and find out really what their situation is. And you have to do that. But at some point, it's probably just better to say, look, we don't want to get, you know, hit with this thing either. And they may have somebody running around on the court that we don't know about. Right. You know, I think everybody wants to play. Every, everybody wants to get games in players, coaches included fans. Um, but I think you got to think big picture. And the hard thing about the Alcorn state situation was because it was day of, you know, you don't know who that coach is in contact with. And, um, and they had a shoot around and they, I'm sure they had a team breakfast and a meal and you just, you know, that's the hard part about COVID right now is you don't, you can't trace it. 
So you don't know. And so, you know, that definitely goes into your thought process a little bit was, okay, you know, when do we think possibly they were contacted and then try to figure out, all right, you know, if they were around everybody else in the program, well then, yeah, there could be a chance that if not today, tomorrow, the next day, that those guys are going to test positive. And if we're, you know, going at it for 40 minutes, well, you're running the risk. So there's a lot to factor in. Uh, that's why we kind of leave it up to the to the team physician and the doctors and the people that know the numbers and the counts and all that stuff and, and let them kind of figure it out. And again, you just kind of roll with the punches. So what is the uh, succession plan, hypothetically, if Ben Johnson tests positive for COVID? And how far down the list do you have to get before Mike Grimm ends up? Or Chris Hockey, who's been a you know a volunteer, hockey, think, yeah. a volunteer coach, where Chris Hockey's actually up there on the floor at the barn, you know, at least doing something. Maybe not being the head coach, but being involved. What's that look like? Well, I was going to say, it probably starts with Hockey. <laughs> I think he's earned that right. Um, you know, and then after that, we'll, we'll, we'll figure out plan B, C, and D. Uh, Grim, you're probably a distant third, you yeah. know, but you, 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 you know, the system, you've been around the program, you, you yeah. understand it. Um, probably got to get a couple of guys on my staff a look first, but you know, if they get it, you're right there. So you kind of got to be that guy and you're in the hole, you know, Maybe. baseball, you're in baseball, you're in the hole. Yeah. Yeah. You're just, you, yeah. You're the, you're the third string quarterback. You gotta yeah. be ready. I'm, I'm, I'm inactive, but you might have to activate me mid game. I could maybe do the game and coach, you know, yeah. signal from the rate. Right. They don't, they know where I sit up there. You, know? you can do, we, we call that doing both. You can do yeah. both. Yeah. And, and I do enough coaching on the air anyway. You well, know? That's my, pro that's my biggest issue with Grimmer being involved is you're going to need a quick succession for after him when he gets teed up <laughs> twice. <laughs> Gets tossed, gets booted after five minutes. Yeah, and Spencer's probably not paying attention, so he <laughs> probably doesn't know how the flow's going. So just don't yeah. get COVID, Ben. I think yeah. that's what we're saying. That's, no, that's the whole. Take care of yourself. That's the. That'll be the whole plan. Yeah, for sure. Well, and that, then the other, uh, you know, follow up to that is all right. You're four hours from tip off. You get notified. Um, for a moment, I suppose you're thinking, is there somebody that you can play? Can we schedule a quick game? Can we scrimmage somebody? Um, and then, you know, when you're thinking about it, it probably is nearly impossible on that short notice. Maybe if it was a day before, you could have thrown something together and a team could jump on a bus and you could figure it out. There have been a few teams that have scheduled, you know, 24 hours out, but that, that also puts you in a bind with how close it was to tip. Yeah, it does. And I think, you know, the first thing you think about is, all right, do we, do we go back out and practice for another 45 minutes just to keep your legs? And then, you know, by that time, the guys had already showered and they're kind of out of it. So it's like, you can't get them back up to get in practice mode and you're risking too much. So then your next, my next thought was, okay, we have to figure out if we're playing on Sunday, right? Because if we're not, and that gets pushed back, well then let's find a game in the next day or two that we can book. So at least we're, we're competing, we're getting a game in. And so that was kind of the next idea. I, I figured, you know, the day of it, it's too hard to, to call somebody and, and, and get somebody here, whether that's a local, you know, D3 team, even um, it's just the logistics make it too hard. But I think the next part was just trying to figure out right, what's the, what's the situation with Illinois? Um, you know, are we going to play? Is it going to be pushed back? Are we not? Um, and then you can plan to get another game. Cause I think at the end of the day, you just don't want to go, you know, nine, 10 days without playing. That's, that's the hardest one. We've all kind of been there and done that. And, um, you know, it, it is really hard to get back into rhythm when you're off for that long. So how lucky do you feel that Illinois got postponed by two days, basically, right. from Sunday to Tuesday, because, and, and how did that all come together? Right. With lucky that they had an opening, you had an opening, the barns open and everything. Yeah, it worked out because, you know, obviously we were in our bye week. And so, um, you know, we had a little flexibility. Obviously, you know, we would have loved to, to have played yesterday and played on Sunday and had the crowd and kept the schedule and been able to get our bye week. But again, um, you know, you just want to get games in. I think that's the biggest thing. It's, you know, you, you start pushing stuff back to the back end of your schedule. That's when it gets tricky. And that's when you're looking at maybe, you know, playing three games in a week which is really tough, especially towards the end of the year. So I think when you're healthy um, and you're able to play, you want to try to get in as many games as you can and, and kind of fit it in. So, you know, fortunate for us, we, we, we had an opening and they did and, and we're able to, to battle on Tuesday. Yeah, and you're, um, in essence, I think it's 13 days, uh, both teams. Both teams last played on December 22nd, talking about Minnesota and Illinois. Um, but had the game just been, if, if Illinois couldn't have fielded a team and you're just off for a whole nother week, 
you think you would have scheduled a different, uh, a different, some sort of a non-conference game this week at some point? Yeah, we would have found it. We would have found a game and found a team. I know there's a lot that are out there looking and it would obviously would have had to have made sense and, and make sure that we're good within the Big Ten and within administration to do it. But that was going to be the next plan to, OK, figure out who who makes sense, um, who's got a who's got a date available. Are we able to do it? And if so, let's uh, let's get somebody here and, and on the books and, and get back playing. So how do you get a handle on really how the guys feel right now when you, you have that run of games you know, in December and then you've got finals, now we've got these COVID deals. So how do you kind of keep your finger on the pulse? Like, all right, our legs are good. We're fresh. We've talked a lot about the minutes guys have played, but certainly they're built to do that. So how do you feel like you are, I guess, right now in terms of, or will we all find out together, you know, Tuesday <laughs> at six o'clock? Yeah, no, there'll be a little bit of that. No, I think, um, you know, just having a pulse. It's, I mean, you, you weren't around these guys so much. You ask questions. Um, you know, our strength coach, Feldy, does a great job. You know, he's got all these different tests he can run and, you know, with body maintenance and, and leg activity and, and all that ter- certain stuff. And, and our guys are pretty honest. You know, I talk to them pretty openly about, you know, how do you feel? What hurts? What doesn't? You know, scale of one to ten, where are your legs at? Um, so we're just always in, in constant communication and then we're smart with how we practice. You know, we're smart with making sure we, we use our off days and when they're off, they're off and they're, they're, they're getting that rest. And, and when we're on, you know, we're going in short bursts and we're, we're being smart with the activity that we do have. And at the same time, still keeping their conditioning at a level that they need to, to play in a game. Um, but our guys also, they do a great job of coming in on their own. You know, if a guy doesn't feel like he's getting enough work in. You know, a lot of guys will come in and shoot or might get on the elliptical or something like that. So um, it's just an ongoing process. And I think the benefit of last year is everybody's been through it Mm. and these guys know their bodies and they know what game shape feels like and they know when they're out of shape and they know if they need to get in more work or if they need less work. And so honestly, I don't really worry about it. It's more of the mental piece. It's more of these guys, um, you know, when you're off for that long, you know, staying mentally sharp. And um, and having that that same championship mindset um, that, that I think I worry about more than anything. All right, let's take our first break. Segment one is in the books tonight. It's Minnesota and Illinois, six o'clock at Williams Arena. There are still tickets available. Go for sports.com as Big Ten play resumes. We want to thank Sunbelt Business Advisors. They should be on your team roster if you're buying or selling a business. And there's never been a better time to sell than right now. You can get your Sunbelt no cost confidential business valuation today. Visit sunbeltminnesota.com. We thank them for their support of Go for Athletics. We'll come back. We'll preview tonight's game. We've got more to talk about it's gopher basketball weekly with ben johnson from learfield welcome back it's gopher basketball weekly with ben johnson tonight it's minnesota and illinois at the barn six o'clock the tip tickets available at gophersports.com hey we want to remind you if you have a question for coach ben johnson you can submit that question at gophersports.com slash ask the coach if your question's selected we'll ask coach johnson during the gopher basketball radio show and if you're the pick you'll receive a 25 dollars gift card from the university of minnesota bookstore and coach we're going to start this segment with the question and it kind of goes back to uh one of the topics we talked about in the opening segment, and it's about the Alcorn State game. This is Tom from Owatonna. He is our question of the week. He'll get a $25 gift card from the bookstore, and he wants to know what the late notice in the Illinois game getting pushed back two days. Uh, what was it? Was there any thought giving to potentially scheduling St. Thomas or another local team? And by the way, he says, P.S. Great work. Love the way the team plays. Um, so uh, we hit on that just briefly, but I do think that's an interesting situation. He's got some D2 teams, D3 teams. They wouldn't count at the schedule, but they can jump in a bus and some of them could be here in 10 minutes. Right. And uh, so how, how do you, how did you determine all of that stuff? You know, it's uh, you think about it just like you think about everything. Um, the hard part is that now you, you, as a coach, you think worst case scenario. <laughs> so it's like, okay, we play a, a D2 or a D3 team and it's a non-counter and, you know, something happens. I wouldn't be able to live with myself or something like that. So, you know, it's there. There's a difference between playing that type of game. And if you play somebody um, that's a division one school that, you know, you know, your guys are going to be all in on and they're, they're fully bought in. Um, that's a different story. But even with that, you do, you, 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 you always balance the, all right, what's the risk reward? Are we doing too much? Are we being greedy? Are we pushing it? Should we just, you know, the the good thing about us is like in the Big Ten, we have, I think, 11 quad one games in the Big Ten. 
So, you know, do we, are we a program where like you, if we did, if we missed a game, do we have to find another one? No, it's honestly more for just where we feel about our rhythm. You know, if I knew we were going to be out over 15 games or 15 days, different story. But, you know, to know that potentially you're only going to be out, you know, maybe seven, eight, eight games or eight days without a game. Um, I don't think you, you, you push the panic button because of, you know, a, a positive or a negative outcome, I guess to say. Um, so, you know, we thought about it, but, you know, I think, uh, I think that just long-term, you, you just worry about what could happen. And, and I love tower and I've talked to him many times. <laughs> Great Saint guy. Thomas, yeah. I don't think we're ever going to play St. Thomas. Really? <laughs> I've, I've told him that. Not, it, and it's no disrespect. It's just, um, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a, We'll just leave it at that, you know. Uh, but well, I do think maybe partner, partnering with them down the road on doing maybe some joint games yep. where, um, you know, maybe it's a doubleheader or something like that, I'd be all about. And, again, you know, I, I think he does a great job and and um, wish him nothing but success. But I think, you know, right now we're probably going to stay away from that game. Well, and, and they're off to a pretty decent start for year one, given, you know, where they, you know, where they're coming from and what they're trying to accomplish. That said, they also had a game that same night. So it wasn't, I know some people I saw on Twitter were like, well, just call St. Thomas, but they were already scheduled for a game that evening. Anyway, whether you were going to potentially play them or not, it was impossible for that particular night. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love that though. Cause I, I know a lot of the local coaches, right? Like the D twos and the D threes. And they're always, I mean, every time you see them, they're probably shaking you down for a game, right? You were probably, I mean, Jacobson was doing that at Northern Iowa, right? When you were an assistant for him. I mean, that's life at the lower levels, but when you're at the big 10, like you say, Hey, I love you guys. Yeah. We can go hang out at the final four, but no, we're not, bringing, <laughs> we're not bringing your team here. Sorry. Yeah. I don't think like that, that, that doesn't make you unique. That's just kind of, I remember talking to, to low uh, Mike young, who's at Virginia tech right, right now. I remember literally talking to him at the final four saying, so you guys are really good. Was he at Wofford before? I yeah. think that's where he yeah. was. And yeah. you guys are really good. It must be really hard. And I've talked to Jake about this, about scheduling, you know, getting power fives and getting games. And he said, yeah, yeah, we're, yeah, nobody wants to play us. And then like 30 minutes later, Mike Young was the coach of Virginia Tech. And I'm like, I, I guarantee you, he's not it, remembering how bad he felt as a water uh, coach trying to get yeah. games. Now he's it, not calling anybody back from that league, right? And there's no way Mike, it's not like Mike's going to go play Wofford and do Correct. them a favor. Exactly you know? right. Exactly so it's, right. It's, it's, you know, it'd be like us, you know, North Carolina is not coming here on their own to play us uh, in a, for a home game. Like, you know, it's just not, it's not going to happen. I think, um, you know, even when I was at Xavier, the Xavier Cincinnati game, yeah, um, it'll be different now because now Cincinnati is going to be in the Big Twelve. So now you got Big Twelve versus Big East. Don't get me wrong; like the rivalry was still there, but you know, when they're in a "quote unquote" non-power six type conference, it, it is a little bit different because that now you're it's more of you're you're playing the game because it's the the history, the tradition, but it's still not quite the same because it's a different level and and I do think there is there is a lot to that and um you know everybody's got to do what's right for their program and I, I understand the the fan base probably would love it and I understand that you know to some people it just makes sense and the location and and all that stuff but uh you know it's got to make sense for us and our program and so um you know like I said right now we're gonna we'll look elsewhere to build the schedule and that can be a topic, certainly uh, other weeks down the road in terms of general philosophies. But I do want to follow up because I know uh, Richard Patino did not like to play in exempt tournaments. Uh, he preferred just to, you know, uh, schedule a different kind of game where you're getting two games, you know who you are playing as opposed to you get into a tournament. You're not sure other than the first round who you'll play. Do you have you uh, gathered kind of what your philosophy is? Would you like to do? Uh, an exempt tournament someplace nice. I know fans like that, but sometimes coaches have agendas that they feel is better for the team. Yeah, no, I think each year we want to grow our schedule. Um, you know, each year, you know, next year, hopefully we're in a tournament that that's a little bit uh, more of a national high profile. And then year three, want to be in one a little bit better. And I think year four and five, there's some heavy hitters we're going to be involved with, which, which is exciting. I mean, that's what you want. I don't, um, if you can get your program to a point where you think you're an NCAA tournament team, I like it because it's the same format, like NCAA tournament, Big Ten tournament. If you want to win those championships, you don't know who you're going to play. You have a general idea of who's in the field, but you don't know. So when, you, when you're at that level, it does prepare you, gives you kind of a preseason feel of, you know, we got to be ready on a one day prep of, of picking up a scout, not knowing. I think all that stuff is great. So, no, I'm all for it. I'm all for 
playing in tournaments that give us national recognition, that, that can, can, can showcase our school, our university on the national scene, um, to get in some with some of the big boys where, where we want to be competing at. And so, uh, you know, I definitely expect each year us to search out and seek and hope we be invited to some of those, those higher level deals. All right. So one of the all time great uh, questions of uh, the old coach, Richard Patino, during this time, I asked him when uh, the Vikings uh, were playing at TCF Bank Stadium, then TCF Bank Stadium, does it help recruiting wise to have that on the national showcase? Well, I asked him that the day after uh, it was minus whatever, eight degrees and the Seahawks and the, and the, the Vikings played. And he's like, no, it, it's awful because now everybody sees how cold it is. So in kind of a weird way, I want to ask you this question. The winter classic the other night was great. I mean, I watched the pregame, watched a lot of that. It was awesome. Target field looked amazing. Game wasn't the greatest, obviously, from a Minnesota standpoint, but it really did showcase the state. But is that good for, and I get it, maybe there's not a lot of basketball people watching that, but is it good that the state was on a showcase and it was minus eight degrees for you guys or no? Yeah, no, I think I think anytime, um, you know, because we'll use that saying like in the spring and the summer um, as like a mail out or you talk about her as a picture, no one's going to remember that it was minus eight. They just see the photo. You know, yeah. in the moment, yeah, they might catch it, but I don't think many guys were recruiting, were tuned into the hockey game. So like they don't, <laughs> they don't, you know what I mean? They don't know that. So yeah. I can still use the image and the pictures and talk about, man, like the NHL decided to have this outdoor hockey game in our state. They picked Minnesota. You know, same thing. We've had the all-star game for Major League Baseball. You've had different golf events. You've had the Final Four. You've had the Super Bowl. To me, you market all of that into one and say, look, they're not having this at cities that aren't a major city. They're not having this at places that don't support athletics and support sports and think sports is a big deal and don't follow it. To me, that's all about your fan base and it, you can sell that and flip it the right way. So now nah, we'll use every single angle to make Minneapolis feel like a sports town all the way around. And we'll use every single angle we can to gain, you know, national exposure. I think anytime you're on national TV um, in any sport that showcases your state and uh, and your fan base. I always think that's a positive thing. What is the re recruiting calendar like right now? Like what what are what types of things are you focusing on? Obviously, National Signing Day was a couple of months ago. We talked about those kids that are coming next year. So, with the season going on, with the high school season, with you guys being on a little bit of a pause here the last couple of weeks, are you able to spend more time on it? Does the NCAA allow that? Kind of update us on that whole thing. So the the timetable doesn't change. We don't like get added anything. I'll be honest, you know, I'm a little, I'm a little careful right now because, you know, the last thing you want is an assistant coach or me in an airport, yep. you know, on a crowded Delta flight. And then all of a sudden you go to a high school game and, and high school game is a free for all. They don't, they can't afford the, the, the testing that we do here. So you're just hoping that people, you know, are safe and if they're not feeling good, they don't go to games or they don't invade your space or they wear a mask or they do all those things. But it's almost, you know, rolling the dice more when you're putting those guys or myself out in that type of environment. So, you know, I'll be honest, I told my staff, um, you know, we're going to kind of put a pause on traveling a little bit right now, just because, it, you know, it, it's you're about to start the Big Ten. There's a lot at stake and you just want to give yourself every opportunity to to play these games. And so um, we've kind of taken that approach. And um, I don't know how long we'll kind of put on a, a, a recruiting ban, you know, local stuff might be a little bit different, but as far as national, I've kind of, uh, kind of paused it a little bit. My follow-up would be, uh, how do you communicate that to the players that you might be recruiting and the parents um, that might, because everybody knows, I mean, you were a recruited athlete. Um, attention's good, right? And you notice who's there and who's not. So I'm sure I'm obviously I'm, I'm, you're not thinking, oh crap, I should probably tell them we're not coming. I'm sure you've thought of this, but how do you communicate that message to them? Yeah, no, honestly, you just, you're up front and you do tell them, um, you know, you say, Hey, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we're going to get out to see at some point. It's just right now, you know, when things are hot and the numbers are high, we're going to, we're not going to see anybody. We're going to focus on our team. Um, and I think families respect that. They understand that's not that, you know, we're saying, Hey, we'll see in the summer. We're never going out again. It's just, Hey, right now we got to make sure we get a couple games under our belt. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how I phrased it is that, you know, you don't want to, you know, my biggest worry was, OK, you come off Christmas where you give guys three days. Then if you get a double pause, you legitimately could be looking at over 20 days where you're either inactive as a team or you're not able to compete because of the other team. And I just told him, like early on, we've got to make sure we get a kind of a buffer of a couple games in 
And then you're able to kind of open it up a little bit. But if if right off the bat you get hit and you're not playing from December 22nd to middle of January, well, to me, you give yourself no chance. And so uh, we just kind of phrase it like that. And, and people were very understanding. I think they get it. Um, and then again, like I'm sure, you know, end of January and, and February, we'll we'll get back out once we've got a couple games under our belt. All right, very good. We'll take another break. We have the uh, uh, contested two. Is that what we're calling it now, JG, uh, coming up after the break? Yeah, optimistically, I think con- long contested two is good. Stretch long four, contested. sometimes you never know. I mean, you, you never, never know where to come up with four. Yeah, so we'll start with two, see where it goes. Last week, Christmas presents, uh, grandma giving him the bad clothes. Unbelievable. Uh, that was. It's going to be hard to top that one, but we're, we'll yeah. give it a shot. The Will Smith jumpsuit, man. We <laughs> yeah. see that on the sideline <laughs> sometime, that's for sure. <laughs> We got to see that. All right, we'll take the break. Stay with us. It's Go for Basketball Weekly with Ben Johnson from Learfield. Welcome back. It's Go for Basketball Weekly with Ben Johnson. The Gophers and Illini tonight, six o'clock. The tip from Williams Arena. Tickets available at GopherSports.com. We want to thank Sunbelt Business Advisors. You can check them out at SunbeltMinnesota.com as they present our show today. And it's time for the. We're going to go with the long contested two. I don't yeah. think you've got four in you here, JG. Well, we might have to start calling it the one and one. Like we're in the bonus. Cause I, and let's <laughs> might see only I get can, one. Yeah. yeah. Let's see if I can make the first one. I'm not even sure I can. Um, Adam Thielen said something interesting, Ben, um, after the Vikings beat the Packers a while ago, because obviously, you know, this past weekend, they did not beat the Green Bay Packers. It wasn't particularly close. They're out of playoff contention. But he said that as a Minnesotan, when the Vikings beat the Packers, like everything is better. Like kids can wear their jerseys to school. Because we've got all these Wisconsin people over here. You know that. We've talked about that before. Uh, does it hurt you as much as it hurts all of us when when the Vikings lose and don't make the playoffs, given your football background, given you're a sports fan? Like, I'm, I'm assuming you got out of bed, you know, this uh, Monday morning. But it's something when, when the Vikings lose, man, especially to the Packers, it just hurts. And I thought Thielen articulated that well as a native Minnesotan himself. Uh, it hurts. You know, for example, I walk in today to practice and Luke Lowe, he's wearing his Packers jersey. Exactly Ooh. right. So you got to deal with that crap and, and, and seeing it. <laughs> is is he now suspended for the Illinois game? I told him, I said, it's going to impact tomorrow. I don't care what you think. It's going to impact tomorrow. Um, no, but I think that's the thing. It's just, uh, when you, you grow up, you know, kind of seeing the different rivalries, especially with football, um, there is a pain that you feel because you know you, what you have to deal with. Right. You know, the the Instagram posts, the, the Facebook posts, the Twitter posts, the the jerseys, the bragging, the whole nine. Um, the next day that you got to encounter, I think, is the is the thing that none of us look forward to. Well, and they're everywhere. Wisconsin people are everywhere. And do you use that in you should use that in recruiting that no one from Minnesota is going over to live in Milwaukee? Uh, all, you know, it's I, I talk about that all the time. You should because every yeah. like. I don't ever hear that from my family that lives in Wisconsin. Yeah. Like, oh, we got all these Minnesota people, you know, peacocking around in their Justin Jefferson jerseys. Like, but the the inverse, like, all the Wisconsin people move over here. So that should be speaking of the the pamphlets you send out. That's that's what we got to be spending out, man. <laughs> oh, we talk about it. We talk about it. It's up there. So I, it just it it bugs me. Um, I do have a, a ahead, quick follow up to that. Just in general, uh, you know, in regard to Thielen's comment. And now as the head coach of the University of Minnesota, obviously the Gophers play the Badgers in football. They've got the ax and now Minnesota has that. And I know that that is, uh, you know, something to be proud of as well. But do you you know, obviously there's an extra heartbeat to that rivalry. Um, And when when you are part on the winning side, uh, do you feel what Thielen feels? But in a gopher sense that, hey, you know, wear that gopher hoodie, wear that gopher sweatshirt, put the flag on the window of your car or what have you. Yeah, no, you do. I, I think it's a little bit different with basketball just because you play them twice. Yep, so there's right. not like the buildup is is just different. Um, so I think it's a different type of rivalry. But I do think there's a there for sure a sense of pride. You know, there's a sense of, um, you know, ownership. Um, it's a game that I think, you know, they would probably say the same. Uh, I think it's good for our league. I think it's good for sports. I think, you know, both sides have a lot of respect for each other. And that's the good part about it. And I think both sides don't want to lose. And so I think that's the thing is that it's a it's a pride deal, especially with basketball. Um, and it's something that, um, you know, I think uh, our guys know the intensity of it and, and look forward to those two games every year. You mentioned that you don't think a lot of guys you're recruiting were necessarily watching the Winter Classic. I'm the only person that grew up in Edina that can't skate, um, literally. That's been proven by the city council, by the mayor. I'm the only one because you, you kind of grow up and you have to do that. That's part of the birthright of growing up there. Can you skate? And how cold would it have to be for you not to skate? 
Um, uh, that's a clunky question, but uh, did, does, did pond hockey ever enter into your mind growing up here in Minnesota? No, it's, it's funny. I actually played for one year and, um, it was really young. Now I want to say maybe I got talked into it, maybe fifth grade. <laughs> I got talked it, to, by it who? Just, it's just got so cold. I had a cousin that played in it and it got so cold. And I was like, dude, this is ridiculous. <laughs> and, and, and it was one of those deals where it's like in the morning, you got the parents shoveling off the rink because it's outside. And it was just like, this is so stupid. And, and, <laughs> and it ran into basketball. And so I was like, well, I'm really not liking it now. But, you know, I gave it a go. And I was a kid. I tried every sport yeah. and, 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 and did it. And I just knew right away that, like, you know, it was fun, you know, get to fly around. But like that, that those eight o'clock, nine o'clock games, it was it was not for me. And so uh, when you can't feel your toes, yep. that's not that's not fun. That's like a different type of of sport. So, so could you play? I mean, were you all right? Yeah, yeah no, I was um, I was I, I was really I could skate. You know, I was fast. I could not I couldn't do the hockey skate. So I just would drag my foot. Yeah. until I slowed down. So there'll be times when like I would be off and either I'd run into the goalie and yeah. after I, I'd score it and just run into the net or I would like score it and either like just drag my foot and end up pretty getting pretty good at the drag or I just run into the boards. It was like one of the two, but it was fun. <laughs> yeah, it's worth it. Now, so I saw Joe Maurer got to skate around. Um, I think Glenn Perkins did as well. I don't remember like what people don't know about Maurer, and you probably know this, you probably played against him somewhere. Um, cause he played for Jimmy Lee rec and when we were you know growing up and, and like, and he was like, just kind of this dude on the team and like, no one knew who he was. And the next thing you know, he was winning the player of the year for football and baseball. I don't think he, I ever remember him playing football. And of course he was probably the best skater on the ice the other day at target field. Right. I mean, right. just by right. definition, that's Joe Maurer. Right. No, I, you think? I yeah, no, I, I, I would love to get back on the, on the, on the ice and give it a, Give it a try. Well, Next you time. know, uh, PJ Fleck uh, went to practice a couple years ago, and, and they put him in goalie gear, and he was trying on to skates though. On skates, yeah. He's on skates. Yeah. So you got to talk to Motsko, and uh, let's get that happening. That'd be fun to see uh, Ben Johnson, but you'd be more of a forward, maybe not a goalie. I yeah, think. no goalie. No, 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 no. Yeah, no. You got to you got to be like Eric Lindros. You want to? I want to. Yeah. I want to. I want to see the toe drag, and I want to see them just run it into the video. The, the ben Johnson stop. Yeah. The, yeah, the, the toe drag is real now. Yeah, <laughs> the toe drag was real. All right, we're on that. We're gonna we're gonna get a hold of Coach uh, Bob Motzko, and we're gonna get uh, Ben Johnson over there at practice someday in gear. That'll be fun. All right, Gargi, good work there on the contested two. Well, I think I made the front end. Uh, I think I, I, it was back of the rim on, on the second one. And, uh, now, now we're going around. the other way. Now we, now we got to get a stop and talk about <laughs> Illinois when we come back to, to yeah, get the show back on track. Yeah, let's do that. We'll take a break. We've got to talk about the fighting Illini. They're in town. It's a game tonight, 6 o'clock at Williams Arena. Stay with us. It's Go for Basketball Weekly with Ben Johnson from Learfield. Welcome back. It's our final segment, Go for Basketball Weekly with Ben Johnson, Mike Grimm, and Justin Gard with you, the Illini and Gophers tonight at 6 at Williams Arena. And again, our thanks to Sunbelt Business Advisors for sponsoring the show. You can visit them at sunbeltminnesota.com. And don't forget, you can also ask your question for Ben Johnson. We had uh, Tom from Owatonna. He had our question of the week earlier. You can go to gophersports.com slash coach, and you can possibly win a $25 gift card to the University of Minnesota bookstore. All right, it's back to Big Ten play neither team coach has played since december the 22nd so i think it's 13 days obviously the holiday break was in the middle you thought you were going to have a game they thought they might have a game they canceled theirs all corn state canceled yours so uh kind of take us through the mindset tonight and what you expect to see on the floor i expect guys to be uh to be engaged to be ready to go we've had a great couple of days of prep and practice and i know um, they're ready to go out there and, and compete against a different body, different guys. And, and obviously when you start back up with Big Ten play, there's a different level of intensity. There's a different level of excitement and juice and energy. And hopefully we got a, a big time crowd that we can feed off of. Um, but I think it's a, it's a great opportunity for our guys to go out there on a national uh, setting and, um, and show what we can do and, and compete against one of the best teams in the country. That's well coached. That's got a ton of talent. That's going to create, uh, you know, a ton of issues and problems and challenges, but, you know, ones that, that we're definitely looking forward to. Purdue was uh, has kind of taken on the role of favorite, but in the preseason, most people had Illinois as the preseason favorite. Kofi uh, Coburn's a preseason player of the year. What do you see from, uh, from the fighting Illini uh, here from their non-conference schedule? Yeah, I mean, when, when you got a guy like Kofi that is uh, kind of a, a, a generational type, physical player um 
you know, it creates all types of problems. So he's a unique challenge. Uh, the benefit is we kind of went up against a little bit similar of a big in Hunter Dickinson at Michigan. Um, but both those guys, you know, put so much pressure on you defensively um, that it's it's a unique challenge, you know, and they've they've done a really good job surrounding him with guys that can play make with guys that can make a ton of threes and, and can really score it from the perimeter. And so it's the challenge of, you know, how you defend them and, and do you do it consistent? Do you mix it up? Um, how do you take away, you know, some of the stuff they want to do on the perimeter? Um, so there, it's going to be, a, you know, a game that, that we're going to have to be really, really locked in uh, for all 40 minutes. There's not, you know, definitely can't be a lot of room for air. Um, but, you know, defensively, we're going to have to play our best and uh, we're going to have to find our rhythm early offensively and figure out where we can uh, get shots and kind of expose what they want to do defensively. Um, but, you know, like I told our guys is from here on out, you, you got to you got to win with your defense and, and you got to be able to. That's the one thing that, you know, night in and night out, you got to rely on it. It's got to carry with you on the road, but especially at home, um, you got to rely on your defense to keep you in these games. Well, I think uh, Brad Underwood did when he first got to Illinois, what you're you know trying to do this year in terms of setting the style that he wanted to play. I, I remember even that first year, first of all, I remember him at Stephen F. Austin, you know, with the tournaments and everything that he did there. And when he got that job, I'm like, well, that's a problem because that dude is a good coach. And they grinded a game down to the wire, I want to say, his first year there at the barn where it was just rugged defense identity. Like, what has he been able to establish there, specifically defensively? Because I think that's a big part of their identity. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, obviously they play extremely hard. You know, the, the cool thing with Brad is you kind of seen him morph. Um, when he first got there, they were a lot of deny. Yep. And a lot of up the line and a lot of try to take you out of your stuff and overplay and force you to make everything a one-on-one -on -one game. And now he's kind of flipped it. Obviously, personnel impacts that with Kofi. You're not going to you're not going to go out there and pressure from all five spots. Um, so now it's kind of a more of a traditional big 10, although they do climb in, you You know, they, they, uh, they've got the athletes to press up and, and force tempo. Um, but you know, the fun, the thing about it too, is they're, they're very similar. They don't play many guys. Um, right. you know, they're very similar to us in terms of how deep they go in their bench, the number of guys and the type of minutes that their, their starters log and the one or two guys that come in off the bench. So, um, I think there's probably more similar similarities than differences in terms of just style of play, um, not personnel, but just style of play and, and, and how we're going to go about things. So, um, again, it'll be a big time challenge. Like, you know, you guys know he does a great job and they're used to winning and they're where we're where we want our program to be, where uh, the expectation is is that, you know, you're trying to compete for a Big Ten title and you're trying to compete for uh, a run in the NCAA tournament. And so our mindset's got to be just like theirs. You know, we've got to we've got to compete tomorrow um, like we're trying to do the same thing. They are that this game can't mean more to them than it does to us. And I think if we have that approach, uh, then hopefully you give yourself an opportunity to win at the end. Uh, last one for you. Um, one of the things you're sitting at 10 and one, and I think one of the things that's impressed me the most in terms of, you know, a good business model, so to speak, is that you have on the offensive end been able to create a setting that gets open shots for your guys and on the defensive end, create a setting that's gotten contested shots for the opposition. And obviously, I mean, that's what every coach's goal would be. But take me through that mindset of we want to get open shots on our end and force contested shots on the other. And to me, that might be the biggest reason you guys are sitting here at 10 and 1. Yeah, I think our our guys have done a, a great job buying into a, both our offense and defensive system and, and our style of play and, and how we want to do things. And, um, you know, I, I know we're top three in the country and, you know, three point field goal defense. And that's something that, you know, we pride ourselves on is we want to try to make, you know, things a game of two. And um, I think it's shown and, and they've been locked in and they understand game plans and, and terminology and understand effort. You know, the, to me, defense, so much of it is, is technique and effort. And um, are you motivated to guard? Do you, do, you, do you value that defense matters? And, and they've bought into that. So we talk about, you know, you win with your defense, you have fun with your offense. And that's what we try to do offensively. Try to space you out. And we, I think we got a lot of versatility. We got guys that can make shots from all five spots. And I think they've bought into, you know, sometimes you got to move it to move it. You got to get it reversed. You know, you got to get multiple touches. You got to, you know, have have dual threats that can all do things. And I think, you know, when you do that and you play that way, it, it frees it up and it takes pressure off, you know, one or two guys that have to carry the load. And do we got guys that are capable of putting up big numbers? We definitely do. But we're a team that, that uh, you know, our strength is in our numbers. 
Um, and so we need to utilize that. And, and I think our guys, you know, they, they enjoy playing the way we do, uh, you know, de- offensively, um, that they enjoy the unselfishness. We got a great group of guys that understand how to play. And I think that helps. Um, and it's proven that, that we can be competitive this way. So I think that's the biggest key is, is when guys believe and they know that you're putting them in a position to be successful, there's definitely a lot more buy-in or it's easier to have buy-in. And uh, we just want to want to keep it going. Very good. Well, let's keep it going tonight. We'll see you at the barn. Sounds good. See you guys. Thanks. All right. He's the head coach, Ben Johnson. For Justin Gard, I'm Mike Grimm. We'll talk to you tonight from Williams Arena, 6 o'clock to tip. This has been Gopher Basketball Weekly with Ben Johnson from Learfield.